What does this face, the pinchers of death, and the lithophane have in common? Find out in our next episode of Average Joe's 3D. Welcome to another episode of Average Joe's 3D. I'm your host, Fergie, and today we're looking at nozzles. Each one of these pieces that you see here were actually printed with a one millimeter nozzle. My CR-10 was clogging with a 0.4 millimeter, and I saw a YouTube channel that we used to use using a one millimeter nozzle. Now that's two and a half times thicker than a normal nozzle, and the only changes you have to make when you're running a nozzle that size is in your slicing software, nothing physically has to change on the CR-10. Incredible, you say? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So I printed this. This comes from my mini factory. And the reason I picked this is because of all the points of hinging and articulation. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight hinges in this. It prints as one piece, and I was afraid with the thicker walls um, that it would just fuse the whole thing together and it wouldn't move. But it's just the opposite. The walls are two and a half times thicker than normal, and I only made this one layer thick with a 5% infill, and yet it feels really solid and heavy in your hands. So um, I even let the kids play with this all day long, pinching things, grabbing things, picking up an M&Ms, and nothing was broken. And believe me, these kids are pretty destructive, pinching and grabbing each other, and yet it survived. In fact, they're making more of these for them so that they can play with these on their own. So durability is definitely something that you should get it for. Now on all the flat surfaces, you can see that it's not filling in very well. Because it's so thick, um, the tops and the bottoms are not gonna be beautiful, but if you're just using this for fun, or you're using it for a demonstration piece, or you just need something that's gonna be solid, this is the way to go. If you have a piece that doesn't have a lot of top on it, a good example is this vase. This vase was done in spiral mode with one layer, and because it's one millimeter, the layer is two and a half times thicker than a 0.4. Now we all know with regular vases, we go ahead and get one. The first time I printed this vase, and I took it off the build plate, I was kind of concerned because there is so much flex in this. And all of the layers, I knew that if I squeezed them too hard, all of the layers would come apart. So this is something you can print. They're beautiful examples of vases, but you have to set them up high so no dogs, cats, or kids can get to them because this will break in a minute. Just even picking it up is difficult because if you put any pressure on the side, you can feel it flex. This, on the other hand, you can see me squeeze it really, really hard. There is no flex in that thing at all. You can take it, the kids can play with it, they can drop it on the floor, and I'm confident that nothing's gonna happen to this. It's not gonna separate, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna crack because it's really nice and solid. And yet, I did it one layer in vase mode and because there's no really top to it, the bottom doesn't look fantastic, of course. But the rest of it is really solid. I like this a lot. I'm thinking of using this to hold my brushes for my paints. Because it's so thick, I did a lithophane. Now, I don't know if any of you have done lithophanes before. This is something where it prints out a picture, and when you stare at it straight and normal, it just looks like nothing at all. But when you tilt it, I don't know if I can tilt it. Here we go. Um, actually, a picture emerges. emerges. It's pretty incredible. There's a website that you can go to, and I'll do, put a link down below for the website. And the great thing about the website is you pick the picture. It will render it for you. And when you hit save, it saves it as an STL file, so it's ready to print right away pretty incredible, but I was afraid that with the thickness, uh, you wouldn't be able to see through it. 
Let's see if I can move this so we can see through it. There it goes. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks pretty incredible. I know what to do. Hold on here. Okay, I just ran. I got a flashlight. There we go. Now you can see the picture emerge like you couldn't before. See? Isn't that incredible? Picture on. Picture off. Doesn't look like much. Picture on. And the whole thing emerges. All the details. You're going to want to make sure that you have a bright background. If it's a black background, it takes forever to print. But, but this is two layers. So we're looking at uh, two millimeters of material and it still comes through really, really well. You can see the picture really well in the sunlight. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And that's a lithophane with a 0.1 nozzle. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when you're using the 0.1 nozzle. And we will use our friend Play-Doh, okay? So here we go. So we take the Play-Doh. We put it in the thing. There we go. So this represents 0.4. Now you can see it's coming out really well. When you're making layers of 0.4, there go. so you have a 0.4 nozzle and you tell it that you want to print in uh, 0.2 millimeters, right? So 0.2 millimeters is not exactly the um, full width. You know that this comes as 1.75 millimeters and then we squeeze it down to 0.4 millimeters, but that's on the sides. So each one of these, when it's being printed, isn't printed straight up. Let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go. Right? Now, whenever you have to go to 0.2, which is half of the 0.4 nozzle, what it does is it smushes down each one of these layers. So it's still 0.4 four, four point, uh, point wide. Uh, that can't be avoided because of the width of the nozzle, but it's only 0.2 high. And then one goes on top of another, goes on top of another, and that's why you sometimes get ripping on the sides here because you can see how they're stacked, right? So if I had 0.1, they would be squished down to 0.1. There'd be less space in between each layer than with 0.4. If you're going to go and have some big curves in there and you're using two occurrences of sidewalls, that way this next layer can set up at a slight angle from the other ones, as you can see. But, you know, you can only go far, so far over before there's nothing for it to stack on. And that's where you would need help. You would need um, some kind of um, support. Because you can only stack them about halfway. If you go more than half the width on a point two, that would be point one over, it's going to fall apart. So let's go ahead and take a look at the one millimeter. Right now, juice. One on here. There we go. So with the one millimeter, now the one millimeter is smushed down like all the others, but it's smushed down, it's point too high and one millimeter wide instead of being 0.2 high and only 0.4 wide. So we can automatically see that um, we get a lot more play to move sideways with an overhang and still have really good uh, layer bonding between the two. So it's still going to stack the same height as you, you go up. These two we're going to equal these two, right? 
but it's a lot wider. And so that's why the vase that we looked at, with the vase, if you take a look, you really can't see very much ribbing at all. It's really smooth like I would expect from the CR-10, but it's a lot thicker. So this is great for stacking things up. If I had a lot of detail, if I was printing out like a face or a bust or some kind of action figure, um, I think when you get around the eyes and the nose and some of the hair, it may not be as detailed as if I was using the 0.4 millimeter. But uh, you can switch nozzles out at any time, which is kind of great. So you're not stuck to just one nozzle. So that's printing with one millimeter. Um, I'm going to go through and leave a description below about where to go on your slicer to make the changes. Everything else so far has been running great. I've been doing tests all day long to make sure that a one millimeter works well. And so far, um, besides the detail on the top and bottom of these, um, there hasn't been any other really drawback to using a one millimeter instead of a 0.4 millimeter. So that's my uh, run through of one millimeter. As always, subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the show.